Blender's EV was purposely designed as a real-time viewport to be a previous tool to support the shading workflow of cycles but along the way EV got out of hand and is now a beast on its own. Like I said before, there are two types of renderers, an online renderer and an offline renderer. EV is a typical example of an online renderer, whereas Cycles is an offline renderer. Now, an online renderer gives you the ability to navigate your scene in real time without having to wait for any calculations. In case you still don't understand, let me take time to break it down for you. In order to calculate and produce images in real time, it uses a process known as rasterization. Now, rasterization works by calculating the data of a 2D scene using the 2D view that you see on the screen and calculates the positioning of the objects, materials and lighting on a pixel by pixel basis. In other words, it's actually faking the 3D effect in a 2D estimate to dramatically save on performance cost. Look, the margin between offline and online rendering is super huge. Placing a real-time renderer head-to-head -head with a path tracing renderer isn't fair, especially in areas such as global illumination, refraction, and caustics. But aside these downsides, EV is very much powered with render speed, volume rendering, subsurface scattering, hair support, a powerful shader to RGB node for NPR shading and the recently added motion blur and cryptomate support, EV is being developed to be a complete production renderer and because of this, there are features being developed to help push EV onto that level. Now these are a couple of downsides to using EV. As it stands now, you get no rasterization design, reflection, refraction, contact shadows and more are screen space effects, right? Meaning that there is no true path tracing calculating light bouncing beyond the rendering screen. And this causes bigger problems such as light bleeds. I'm sure most of you have encountered one before, but maybe you didn't know it went by this name. Okay, so light bleeds are when light goes through the other side of the object's geometry, even if the surface is closed off and no light should be passing through. This is common when you have a source of light close to a layer of a thin geometry and a solution to it will be for you to use a solidify modifier to make that geometry thicker. By comparison, light bleed is not a defect you would encounter when using cycles because cycles calculates the lighting based on the light path and not the basic information provided by the viewport. This is very challenging to people who include EV in some of their final renderings. So now what's the main purpose of EV, right? EV, I would say, is great for visualizing, like I said when I compared it with um, Cycles in the beginning, because EV allows you to preview the appearances of your models in real time whilst you have your materials, textures, and lighting all applied. This makes it the best free choice for creating concept arts. It's also the best choice when you want a better representation of what a scene or model would look like when completed. You know most games are built from the ground up using the rasterization method of rendering. This makes EV a best option when it comes to previewing game assets with its ray tracing path providing graphical extra to make the game look nicer when it comes to shadow and reflection. If you are looking forward to creating materials in game engines, can you try using EV to get a very good idea of what the model will look like before you export? This is just my own personal take. That is, if you want to, but if you are sure of your art and want to render straight up, good luck. Until my next video, peace out.